All right, we in here on this Suburban of mine. Posted a video last year about trying to figure out why my air wouldn't work, my cruise control wouldn't work, and then the ABS light. These lights here will sit here and flash back and forth, back and forth. Let me put on the brake, see what happens. We turn on the air, and I turned on the the blower will work on high if I do it when it's not moving. But you can see how that thing keeps flashing. What's it there? See the brake light come back on there? They're going to flash. See if I hit the cruise control if it does it. But turn the heat back on. kicks on. And now I don't have no heat now. Or no a a blower motor, I should say. So the symptoms of this is... Lights will flash, blower motor won't work, cruise control don't work. And if I'm driving down the road and I turn, try to turn the blower motor on, my RPMs will shoot up like it's trying to shift or whatever. So I've been looking and looking and looking. Well, when I bought this thing, it had a bad ignition switch. And I went in and I bypassed it. I didn't bypass it. I bypassed the relay, used the relay, and I bypassed and made power to here so I'd have power to my PCM. It ran just fine. Everything worked great. Six months or so later, and then that's when the, the heat and stuff would start. And then after that, I didn't have no problems with it. It would it'd be just fine. It worked all summer. Now, winter hits, it's do, it started doing it again. So I went ahead and said, I'm going to go ahead and look figure out what it is well it's ignition switch and I think I bought the wrong one I did no I didn't but anyways uh, underneath there you got this pink wire that sends power to the PCM the yellow wire orange wires the ABS stuff and all that so this is what's bad right here this connector so I bought all new and uh, we're going to change that thing out don't ask me how we're gonna do it cuz I'm not real real sure but I bought a new way ahead bought a new lock cylinder too cuz my uh, this little dealio broke on it makes it hard to turn so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do this so, what we have here is a failure to communicate, which really it is. It won't communicate with the rest of the system if there ain't no power to it. So, um, move the keys out the way. You gotta have a special little thing right there. If I remember right, there's this one, there's that one. If I remember right, the there was a reason why that thing was so hard to change or what why I didn't want to change it I think one of them things are hard to get to <laughs> so anyways I'm gonna I'm gonna go I gotta go get the socket for this it's in the house I had to buy a whole set of sockets for it because it's them internal or external torques I think it is just them two you know what let's uh let's just go in here Let's see what it looks like. Yeah, I uh, bought a cheapy. Oh, cheapy. Yeah, it looks like it's just only, only two. Yeah, I like Napa and them. They want a couple hundred dollars for that thing. And I wasn't paying that much for it. Ooh, my ear ringing. Somebody talking about me. So there's that. Comes with the whole wiring, wiring kit. So, so yeah, we just gonna we we'll just gonna take them other bolts off, stick that in there, and uh, yeah, goes like that on there. We'll run the house, get them sockets. I'll be back up. All right, so we have a E5. You see the thing there? Uh, see if I can't get you guys a spot over here. Um, 
Got to find something that's metal. I don't know. somebody pulled up hold on all right we got it changed uh i didn't video it I had somebody show up and uh got to i was working on it and stuff um so straightforward this screw here this screw here and this pulls off you got this wire up here you got to turn turn the bottom of the wires pull it this way turns this way it comes undone now you'll go underneath follow down wires down and there'll be this plug there'll be a set of plugs on this uh, wires on this side and all you got to do is that little clip right there put you a little screwdriver here you see where it kind of how you can put your little screwdriver right there and now push it away and then you can pry and then it'll slide out slide out and uh then here down here will be two two wires here that has to be unpinned let me uh, get you guys up here so we can uh, so we can talk and see each other a little better okay so right here there will be I think a blue wire no orange and black wire will go next to this pink wire and there will be a blue wire next to the red wire and you gotta unpin it <laughs> let me see if I can find a little clip Of course, I don't know what I did with them. Uh. Well, anyways, right here there'll be a little blue bar. It's got three prongs that go in there. You're just gonna have to pry them out, pick pick them, and pick a, use a pick and pull them out. There's one on each side. You gotta pull pull this one out, and you'll pull the orange and black wire out of this one right here, and then the blue wire here. And then over on this side, there's a gray wire. And it's just underneath the green wire. And this one will be an empty one. So right here where this pink is, be an empty. And then the gray wire here. You also got to pull a blue one off of this side. And it's got the three three long legs. So when you push them in, push that wire in, slide that bar in there with them legs. Pull that wire, make sure it locks. And same on this side. When you get the wires... Put in where they need to go they'll be here and here on this and uh make sure you just push that back in there now pulling that out it didn't let none of these other ones come out but them uh, them wires so if you if need be you can uh go right in here and kind of slide your little pick in there your little pin out tool and it should slide out but these, these may not may not do it because of there and that's how you're going to do it you see right here and then when you put that back in make sure you push out the centers of them the center right here this little lip it makes it easier to lock for it to lock in place because if you don't have it out and you put that blue bar in there it may not lock that blue bar may not lock it but or i w shouldn't say it wouldn't won't lock it it just won't uh it will allow it to slide back. Now see how she's pointing up a little bit now. Because if you if you don't get that locked, I don't even remember where I pulled that one out of. Maybe right there. I don't remember. I think it's here. So if you don't get that tab pulled up and you get that blue lock in there, this this wire can do this. So when you lock, when you bolt this wire back in, this harness, this connector will screw in. It will push that wire back out like this and not actually make the connection so make sure you push that them uh little centers up so that they're po poking up so they can they'll lock in there see how that one that one there is wanting to do that 
So, anyways, that's your fix for your ABS lights up here flickering and flashing. And then now look, I got all my heat controls. My cruise control should work. Uh, I had a problem with my windows not working. I could use this window button. Of course, these window, this window buttons are broke because it's for kids. Some people I bought it from had kids and they didn't want the kids rolling the windows down. So they broke that, popped them out of there. Let's see if this driver's side will open now. Nope, still don't work. So that's for another another day, another time. I ain't worried about it. Um, I changed out the lock cylinder too. Like I said, uh, because of this little thing was broken, it's hard to turn with just the key. This piece was broke broke off. Um, take your take your little pick. There's a hole right here, and you're gonna put that in there, and you turn this key. And when it, you unhook your battery, so you'll turn your key until basically in the, in the start position and hold it. And you'll feel that little little uh, thing right here. You're pressing this down. So you have to have it turned all the way into start position. And uh, you'll be able to push that down with your pick. Because it's just a single hole and, you know, and it's, this guides down in there. And then it will pull out. And then you just simply slide in the new one. Uh, there's, it's, uh, you've got this thing right here. It's got to be lined up. And then when you get it lined up or whatever, and it slides in there enough, have your key in there. And then you can turn your key where you need to. So this here will line up and uh, with the inside of that. And it'll slide in the rest of the way. So did all that. We have everything we need. Starts up real nice. A lot faster than it did before, too. So I have cruise control. My uh, blower is working like it should, so I should have cruise control. Push on the brake. Oh, yeah. No lights flashing. So that's the fix. But I had this relay up here to bypass the... Uh, power going to the PCM so I've got to fix this wire here I, I cut it and I sh probably shouldn't have so I've got to I'll probably just well I just undid it but it don't matter keys all I'll just cut these two wires and put them together and heat shrink them uh, I'll go get the, go get my stuff now all right well I got my little kit here uh, it don't actually have heat shrink to go over to something this big but this these are heat shrink tubes with solder inside i actually bought this stuff off timu i didn't know if that timu sh stuff was real or not i wanted to try it out so i went ahead and did it which i mean that's about the only thing i bought off there i did buy uh new golf cart seats and uh not seats but seat covers and uh let me tell you Pay twenty dollars for them, and uh, I got what I wanted too. It's got like orange pinstriping and everything. So we're gonna we're gonna cut these wires. Be this wire here, and we're gonna we'll just cut you know so much of this here, about here. Give us give us plenty of room. This way we can be fixed back to the way it was the reason why this is orange and this one's pink is I cut this wire way down here which I should have never did when I I thought I was uh, being smart and I wasn't so uh, when I did it my lights and stuff didn't work so I had to the relay had a five pin so I five pinned it together and it made it all work that way I ain't gonna explain it. We'll just pretend that one's pink. How's that? When using these heat shrink things, you you wanna kind of give yourself a little more wire. Come on. And 
this one's a strong wire here, boy. A big one. See a big one. There you go. So we'll probably use probably use this one. But if you notice, look how thick them strands are. Should have buck connected these, but I'm lazy. So you want the center of the solder in between where you made your connection. And then I just have me a little torch gun. You want to be careful, you'll melt this thing where it won't don't work right. So And as you're heating that up, that solder will will eventually melt. You see it changing colors now. It'd be better using a heat gun instead of direct flame. Yep, she's ready for the auction block. Not really. I'm keeping this thing. I paid $500 for it. Wouldn't be worth the... Uh, ain't got no car payment. She runs good. We put them headers on there a while back. You guys go check out the video on that. Um, right now, all I got left to do for this thing is actually drive pretty decent. Is we gotta change the shock right here down there. It's blowed out. So when I hit bumps, it boom, it rattles. Tire drops down real fast. Uh, I need to find my waterproof tape. We'll tape use some tape on that since I don't have. That was slippery. I'm about to edit that one out. Maybe I don't know. It was kind of funny. Well, I don't know where my waterproof tape's at. I rolled my rolled on the hose there. Fireproof tape. We don't need uh, waterproof. We got fireproof. Not really. You know, duct tape. You get it? Duct tape. All right. Here we go. So we're just going to use this basically as a an insure, just in case the plastic did melt through. And uh, I don't want it touching ground anywhere, so we'll take care of that. Oh, I got one more wire to cut. She's all back to original, basically. I gotta go get. I gotta get my wire cutter again. I uh, had to run a wire from the fuse box for key on. You know what? No, I don't. We'll just unplug it. <laughs> I ran a, a power wire out of the fuse box for key on. When the key come on, that relay would kick on, and then that would turn my power on to the uh, thing. It's right here. So see, and I ran, I ran uh, fuses in it, one, one for each wire, so it was all good there. So get you guys somewhere propped up here. So then I'll just take the 10 amp fuse out and I'll stick it back in the original slot. And then I, if I ever need another key, key switch on. Uh, uh, damn it. Man. See, this is stuff that I'd be talking about fighting me. Stop fighting me. Huh. Well, that went so, so far I can't even find it to use it again. So, come on. There we go, and we'll stick that back in the slot. So now we got that back, and then we'll just tuck that in there. And if I ever need key power for something, I've got it. Uh, 
put the cover back on it was broke you can see where the tabs are broke so i didn't break them they was art this thing was already off when i bought the thing so uh, i do want to get that around there there we go come on The old key switch here is messing me up. Uh. Nope. Yeah, well, I'm gonna put you guys down. I need two hands. All right, we got uh, we got it all put back together. I lost the cover to my battery or to my fuse box. I how I ain't had it for I don't know how long. I think probably back when I first started having these problems. But she is fixed. Took me a year. I think about this, about this time last year she's doing it. I was like, man, I wonder if it's the temperature. But obviously it wasn't. It's the uh, ignition switch. And uh, all in all, today was a pretty good day. I mean, got rid of that blue cart that we was having problems with spark and got the spark on it and had the guy come pick it up because the rear end's bad uh, he wanted me to fix the rear end I told him no I ain't doing it can't do it I said it's just too much too much of a deal too much of a hassle I said I don't want to pull no rear end so sorry I wasn't able to film the whole process on changing that ignition switch but I know that I I'm sure other people's having this problem and ain't been able to figure it out uh, so, if you know anybody's having a problem with the ABS, ABS and brake light flashing, um, share the video with them. Let them know. Uh, if you can, give me a. If you like the video, hit me, hit the thumbs up. And uh, I mean, if you learned something, hit that subscribe button. Hopefully, I learned that learned that from you guys. And uh, we'll uh, we got that motor coming up on this G29. Or no, it's a G2 Yamaha golf cart motor we're rebuilding. Let me, uh, I'll give you guys a little sneak peek. You know, membership here needed for sneak peeks. I got her tore down to that far. We got to get the clutch off and uh, pull that clutch off to uh, pull the side cover off to get the rod loose. Pull the piston and the rod up out this way. We're going to put a new piston and rod on it. We got, we got parts here. That's the piston and rings. I thought he said he had got a rod bearing. That might be it. But I don't think these have rod bearings. But he said he got one. I don't know. We'll know when we get in there to it. So we'll see you guys on the next one, which will be this G29 or this G2. And then uh, after the, this is done, we'll get back on doing the body. Uh, this is a sneak peek, too, because uh, we've had a video of painting this. And. Uh, we messed it up. Imagine that. I'm always messing it up. So yeah. Uh, so messed it up. There's a solution to messing up paint. And it's not always sanding it all the way off. But we still got to sand it again. So anyways. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. If uh, I don't know. I don't know what to say anymore. Uh. We'll see you on the next one. How's that?